magic ding, here we go. Uh, exploring space. From Carl Sagan, another one of my nerd heroes, a good quote. We live in a society exquisitely dependent on science and technology uh, in which hardly anyone knows anything about science and technology. Most of, know, most of you know how to use your smartphone. Most of you have little or no idea how it works. And that could be worrying. I already had you install this the other day. Remember the Spaceship 3D app? Okay, our spacecraft 3D, so I had this written, I was gonna do it today, but we did it another day ago, but that was a pretty cool app. If you wanna see some of the probes that we're talking about, thank you, I forgot to unlock. Yeah, crack, thank you. So let's start. Space-based technology, uh, very, very difficult and expensive to send a person into space. Right now, it's about $30,000 per pound. Uh, that's into low Earth orbit. The further that you go, the more expensive it gets. Okay? So you can imagine if you know how much you weigh in pounds, that's how much it would cost just to get you up to the ISS, not to keep you up there, not to feed you up there. And remember, we'd have to send food with you, and that's also extra money. Oh, and because you're sending food, you need extra fuel to cover the food, but the fuel itself has extra mass and costs extra money. It's expensive. So... We use satellites, rovers, and probes to collect the data for us. I didn't put this in your notes, but just so that you know the difference in terminology. A satellite orbits a planet, and its job is to communicate with us. It does remote sensing. It takes pictures. It measures data. But a satellite does not land on the planet. We have satellites. We have sent satellites to most of the planets. The one we haven't, which is no longer a planet, is Pluto, but the New Horizons probe is about to arrive at the end of, in the middle of June, I think, and it's already taking pictures of Pluto. We sent it off in, 20, in 2006, I think, so if you keep your eyes open, you'll see the first pictures nice and close up of Pluto. Probes. Uh, probes may pass by numerous planets. Uh, once they land, they can't move, and they send data back to Earth. Not Often do they land, though. Often we'll send a probe. For example, Voyager went by several planets. So satellite went in orbit. Voyager is not in orbit. Voyager has kept on heading out. And then in the past few years, past few decades, we've gotten good at robotics. We have rovers. These are sent to a specific planet. They land, and they can move around and send data back to the Earth. Where do we have rovers? Uh, Kevin, where does it need? Is that seeding plant? Just pass it forwards. Nicole, could you pass it forwards, actually? Thanks, kiddo. Hudson, behind you. Um, where, hey, where do we have rovers right now? What planet? Or planets? Mars. Mars, we have several. That we'll talk about the most. Fact, let's talk about the Mars rovers. The first two that we sent were Spirit and Opportunity. They landed in January 2004. How old were you guys in 2004? Four. Four. Okay. Um, they wanted to study the history of Mars, especially the presence of water. Why water? Because on Earth, anywhere we found water, we found microbial life or more complicated life than even just microbes. Anywhere we find, wa find water, we find life. And at first, we didn't realize that, but even like in the depths of the ocean where there's no sunlight next to volcanic vents and things, hey, we found life. Keep passing it down. Whoever it needs to get to, keep passing it until you see. So send it down. You figure it out. Um, they were well engineered. Nate, they were supposed to last 90 days. Uh, Spirit lasted until 2010, and opportunity is still going. Still going. Now understand, in 2004, this is before the iPod, this is before your iPhones, and remember, if it landed in 2004, it was probably built and designed around 2000. It's fairly old technology, but they really built it well. They're still going. So spirit lasted until, uh, you can underline here, opportunity, still going strong. I have to give you a sad comic. So this is from Spirit. Somebody wrote this. Spirit has landed on Mars. 
day one of 90, and the Spirit Rover thinks, well, 89 more days to go, because they were only designed for a 90-day mission. Day 88 of 90, two days until I go home. Day 91 of 90, huh? Day 103 of 90, maybe I didn't do a good enough job. Day 127 of 90, maybe if I do a good enough job, they'll let me come home. Just put it there. Day 857 of 90, I thought I analyzed that rock really well. It's okay, I'll do the next one better. Still wondering why no one's come back to get it. Day 1,328 of 90. Sandstorm. Power dying. But a good rover would keep going. A good rover like they wanted. Day 1,944 of 90. Oh no. I'm stuck. And it did get stuck. Did I do a good job? Do I get to come home? Guys? Now, I don't think it thought that. In fact, I know it didn't think that. But it's kind of sad. It lasted until 2010. Uh, at one point, one of its wheels was broken, and so it was running on five wheels and dragging the sixth wheel. Dragging a wheel makes it pretty tough to maneuver, although that turned out to be a blessing in disguise. Because it was dragging a wheel, it actually was uncovering some things below the soil that we didn't know were there. We got some neat data because of it. But eventually, it just ended up in some soft sand. And when you're dragging one wheel and you're stuck in soft sand, they just couldn't get it out. And then they use solar panels to recharge. The reason we only thought they'd last 90 days is we thought the batteries would die. And you say, well, they got solar panels, but the solar panels get covered with dust and there's no one there to clean them. What we didn't realize was in the winter time, the dust, the wind would actually blow the dust off the solar panels and they kept waking up after the winter time and re-going. Opportunity is still going strong. Mr. Duick, that was kind of a little sad story. No, it's a cool story. They're still going. The new mission. The Curiosity Rover. It landed August 2012. It landed August 2012. Curiosity tweets. You can sign up to their Twitter account, at Mars Curiosity. Yeah, it does. Put your pencils down. Why Mars? Oh, Curiosity Selfie. This is stitched together from multiple images. I pulled this off the internet just the other day. And you have on your Spacecraft 3D app, you can look at a better model. I emailed you the template, or you can grab one from here. You can see the Curiosity in 3D. It's a pretty impressive piece of machinery. A Little bit of Mars geography. These are the three places that we've landed. I forgot to write down which one is which, but maybe if I look close, you know what? Curiosity is right there. There's the Gale Crater, and then Spirit and Opportunity landed at these two locations. Why Mars? Because it turns out Mars has polar ice caps. It's got water in ice that shrink and expand every year. Oh, does Mars have seasons? What did we learn last class? What causes seasons? One word begins with letter T, tilt. Mars is also tilted, it has seasons too. So does Mars have seasons? Yes, why? It also has an axial tilt. Mars also has the highest mountain in the solar system called Olympus Mons. It's almost three times taller than Mount Everest. It's got the deepest chasm in the solar system called Melis Chasma, Latin. It's way deeper and way longer than the Grand Canyon. But most important, Mars has lots of water in ice. And as I've said, so far on Earth, any place we've found water, we've found life. If we find life either on Mars, or I'll talk about some of the other areas in the solar system that we're looking for, where there is also water, if we found microbial life there, casual, what that would suggest is life isn't that unusual. Then we could probably 
for, for there to be life on some of the other planets as well as on Earth where there was water, we could say, oh, you know what? Maybe most of the time, if you've got water, life will develop and evolve. And then when we start looking beyond our solar system, we could maybe start thinking that the whole Star Trek universe of different intelligent life out there might be right. So here's a picture of Melis Chasma that I yoinked off the internet. <coughs> Mars has lots of water ice. Why is this important? Important on Earth, wherever we find water, we find life. And I should be careful, Riley, when I say life, I'm not talking intelligent speaking life. I'm saying, hey, look, even microbial life, that's life, and that's a big step. That's, ah! Okay? So even bacteria. Oh, yeah, turn the page. So what is some of the evidence for past water on the surface of Mars? I think this might be a good question to ask on the test for this chapter. So what is some of the evidence? There's polar ice caps. But we actually think Mars might have been fairly covered with water, much like Earth in the past, not just locked in ice at the north and south pole of Mars. There is uh, small amounts of water in the atmosphere. It is humid. Not very, it's pretty dry, but there is water there. But what we've noticed with the probes, with spirit and with opportunity and with curiosity, is we have seen what appears to be ancient lake and riverbeds. Evidence of erosion by water. Well, the only way, Kevin, that could occur is if you had a lot of water. What other evidence do we have? Well, there's evidence of ancient glaciers. And there's the presence of minerals or rock formations that only form in the presence of water. So we think hundreds of millions or perhaps billions of years ago, we think Mars might have had lakes and oceans, not the dry planet that it currently is. What happened to the water? That's another show. So the Phoenix lander in 2008 exposed ice as it landed. It watched, uh, exposed, sorry, there's your magic word, ice as it landed. It watched chunks of ice disappear, evaporate, it detected some snow falling at the poles, and it even saw drops of liquid water. Today, the atmosphere is too thin and cold for liquid water to exist. It would evaporate. In fact, the fancy word, it would freeze and sublime. It would turn to a gas right away. So all the surface water has long since disappeared. So it's generally believed that Mars had abundant water very early in its history during which snow and rain fell on the planet and created rivers and lakes and possibly oceans. In which case, life might once have existed. And maybe still does, maybe not. Of course, that could be happening. No? Maybe there's a whole alien civilization on Mars and all they're doing whenever we send a probe down is just holding something in front of it so that we're only getting pictures of barren rock. Hold still, Larry, it's taking another picture. He still think, he'll think about it, he'll figure it out. Why do we care? Put your pencils down, stop taking notes for a bit, but keep listening, don't zone out or I'll freak in a nice loving teacher kind of a way. What that means, Amelia, this is not on the test, but it's cool. Jordan's gonna sit up though, thank you. Uh, so far, 
looking at Mars, we've always been fascinated by our closest neighbor. Uh, studies started in the 1600s with telescopes. The first Mars map was published in 1840. There have been many missions to Mars by many countries, but until recently, it was so technologically difficult, there was a high failure rate. In fact, NASA has a famous mistake, Amelia. They crashed a probe into Mars because the engineers did the math in meters and kilometers, and the people controlling it thought it was feet and miles. And so they smashed it into the surface because they were using the wrong units. That was a $300 million mistake. So if you think you've made mistakes, you haven't made a $300 million mistake. Uh, the first successful flyby was in 1964. The first successful orbital orbiter was in 1971. There are nine satellites that are currently orbiting Mars. Uh, three are still working. The other six have died, but they're still in orbit. Uh, the first successful lander was in 1982. It landed on the surface, but they couldn't move. Ah, but then the first successful rover was in 1997. We've sent four rovers to Mars. Two are still working, Curiosity and Opportunity. Uh, Spirit, which I told you about. I showed you a little comic. I think Phoenix was the name of the other one. I think I'd have to go look it up, though. Oh, sorry, try that again. So it says, he followed me home, his name is Rover. No, okay, tough audience. Still don't need to write this down. Current exploration, so there's currently two rovers. Opportunity, landed in 2003, meant to be 90 day mission, still going. It's pretty impressive actually. Curiosity, landed in 2012. And I think on the previous slide, I said there was three actives. I did some research. There's currently five active satellites. I forgot to change the previous slide. Fact, there they are. There's a picture of what's orbiting Mars right now and active. You don't need to know that. That's purely hashtag nerd trivia. So spirit and opportunity, I put this in here and then I realized you can't read any of it, but they landed in 2004. Uh, spirit very quickly developed a wheel issue, and so it spent most of its life dragging one wheel that was twisted and wouldn't turn properly. Uh, and then eventually in 2010, it just got stuck in some soft sand and they tried, there's actually a whole documentary you can watch all the clever ways and inventive ways they tried getting it out, but they couldn't. The, and again, the reason these probes lasted so long, Omid, we thought only 90 days because we figured dust would cover their solar panels and then when dust covers the solar panels, they won't recharge anymore. But it turned out wind kept blowing the dust off of the solar panels and we didn't anticipate that. So they lasted longer. There's the Curiosity rover. The Curiosity rover is huge. It's about the size of a minivan. It's the biggest thing we've ever sent to another planet. Some photos. Uh, Bill Nye, the science guy, you all know Bill Nye. Uh, he's in charge of the International Planetary Society, so he had some input on the Curiosity rover. And Lena, one of the things that Bill Nye is nuts about, just loves, are sundials. He loves sundials, the little things that make a shadow to tell the time. And so he insisted that they put a sundial on Curiosity rover. See it? Right there. He said, why, why wouldn't you have a Mars sundial? Come on! The landing. How hard was it to land Curiosity on Mars? Really tough. So Curiosity, just under 11 feet or 3.3 meters long, 9 feet or 2.8 meters wide, and 7.5 feet, 2.2 meters tall. It's about the size of a minivan. It's huge. Weighs 900 kilograms. Top speed is 140 meters per hour, which is not very fast, but we, have, we don't want it to go fast. We don't know what's out there. It's expected to last two years. It's already done that. It was expected to make 20 miles. I think it's already passed that. Cost two and a half billion dollars. And that's the negative or the questionable or the ethical part of space exploration. The question is, should we spend money on it or could we spend money on other stuff? And I think the answer is, I think you can do both. Why Gale Crater? Strong evidence for the existence of water, so there's a better chance of finding any evidence or any forms of life. It's 150 kilometers across, and it's got a large mountain in the middle. 
Pick your pencils up. So let's talk about space travel for humans. How do we get things into space? Well, the first thing that we can use are rockets. These are used to transport materials and astronauts into space. We used that back in the 1960s to go to the moon. And we're using that now, although again, the US NASA right now doesn't have the ability to send human beings into space. Only Russia right now, I believe, has the ability to send human beings into space, although NASA is developing a whole new set of rockets. Uh, the reason when you see a rocket, it's so huge, pretty much that's all you're sending into space. This is all fuel and engines. It takes a tremendous amount of energy to send something into outer space. So most of the body is filled with explosive fuel that burns to create the thrust, the force that causes the movement. In the 1980s and in the 1990s and in the early 2000s, we had the space shuttle. Unlike rockets, most of it was reusable. Only the fuel tanks were discarded. You can see that in your text on page 440. The space shuttle had a big cargo hold so it could launch and retrieve satellites. That was new. We hadn't been able to retrieve satellites before. We built satellites to be disposable, Aiden. We used them, and when they died, they burned up in the atmosphere, or they just stay up there. It could also deliver supplies and astronauts to the International Space Station, the ISS. <sighs> now all retired and in museums. Are you ready? Do. Mr. Duick's space shuttle selfie. <laughs> I went and saw one in California. And I know what you're all thinking. Mr. Duick doesn't know how to take a selfie very well. No, I don't, but I had to take it. It's a space shuttle! <laughs> so what do we have now? The ISS, the International Space Station. This is a space-based laboratory. It's orbiting 350 kilometers above the Earth. It goes around the Earth every 96 minutes. It's about every 90 minutes, it's every 96 minutes. Astronauts live there for extended periods of time, months or years. It's very big. You can clearly see it at night. Lena, it's the second brightest object in the night sky after the moon. Mitra, it's far brighter than Jupiter or Venus. Download an app. I think I pointed if you have an iOS, ISS spotter, if you have Android, and I will say to you, I'll check it. Right now, it's still coming over us during the day. Once I know that it's coming over us at nighttime, I'll send you guys an email. If you get a short video of the ISS passing overhead and you send it to me, I will give you bonus marks on the test that you just wrote. Two bonus marks. Okay. It's pretty cool. Current ISS commander is Scott Kelly, an American. And this is actually really, really neat. Uh, his Twitter account is at Station CDR Kelly, so Station Commander Kelly. If you tweet, it's worth subscribing to. And the reason this is so neat, he's going to live on the ISS for an entire year. Uh, there's other uh, crew up there as well. So there's uh, different nations who pay money and supply modules also get to supply crew. There's an Italian, there's a couple of Russians right now. Um, I can't remember who else is up there. But Aiden, he has a twin brother who is a retired astronaut. Why is this so helpful for research? They have identical genes and DNA. So now you can compare the DNA between somebody living for a year in zero G and somebody on the ground. You have almost identical DNA. You can do some really nice research that way and get a really good feel for the effects of living in weightlessness. And it's not just weightlessness, but when you're above the Earth's atmosphere, you're also exposed to solar wind and way more cosmic rays. They're getting a lot more radiation than we are. So it gives you a very, very nice baseline to do research. Cool photo of the sun that Mr. Duick needs to show you. Put your pencils down. If 
you ever get a chance, astronauts give tours of the International Space Station on YouTube videos. It's pretty cool. Rihanna. Face down, put it away, or I'll take it away. Put your pencil down. We're gonna pause here. Tomorrow, Amelia, we're gonna ask, are there aliens out there? Intelligent life out there? We're gonna talk about the Fermi paradox and what scientists think the odds are of life out there. What's your homework today? Nothing. Oh, I'll get caught up. I do see you guys tomorrow.